All right, so welcome to a live episode right here from Foodable Smart Kitchen and Bar. I am here with Chef Miguel of Pisco Anasca. Great to have you on the set today. Great to be here, Paul. Yeah, so you have an amazing Peruvian restaurant right here in Miami. Yes. Pretty cool concept. I love the fact that you guys are kind of growing as well at the same we time. Growing. Yes, yes. Pisco Anasca, we got two locations here in the area. Yeah. And a third one coming very soon in D.C., Washington, D.C. Absolutely. So we're celebrating National Ceviche Day, which is one of the most... Uh, recognized Peruvian dishes. Yes. It's kind of like the it's staple our, of It's staple. It's yep. our staple dish. Uh, probably the most famous Peruvian dish uh, right now. Yeah. And, and the one that we, as a Peruvian, want to promote. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when you look at uh, Peruvian flavors, let's talk a little bit about why Peruvian menus are really starting to excel here in the industry yeah, today. Yeah, it's, it's becoming very trendy. Huh? Yeah, so uh, it's very on trend. I mean, uh, there's a bunch of influence in, in the cuisine uh, from, from Chinese, Japanese, bringing their flavors and adapting to, to the new land. And, and I think it has to do with that. And the fact that, that Peru uh, as, as itself has uh, a bunch of uh, uh, products that, yeah. that, that take us. Potato, for instance. We got 30,000 type of potatoes. <laughs> That's crazy, huh? All right, so let's let's move a little bit into uh, the restaurant itself, Pisco Nasca. So, tell me a little bit about how you guys got going. What was the background? Yes, all Pisco Nasca is a Peruvian gastro bar. Uh, we do Peruvian traditional Peruvian food with a twist, but essentially is is traditional. Right. Okay. <laughs> traditional Peruvian. When you talk about traditional Peruvian, over um, kind of some of the variations we've seen on Peruvian, uh, especially here in Miami, because we've seen a lot right. of restaurants that have moved in some some different tracks. Um, what are some of the differences there in, in terms of the menus themselves? We, we are trying to bring every single aspect of the Peruvian cuisine. Uh, uh, for instance, Japanese food is, is, is a big thing in Peru. We call it Nikkei. We have some items in the menu from that area of, of the gastronomy. Okay. We got the Chinese right. area as well, touching some of the dishes in our Andean influence as well, got with, it. with a bunch of potato dishes in the, in nice. the, in the menu. All right, so let's move mm -hmm. into the dish today, which is obviously the ceviche dish. Tell me a little bit about what we're doing first. Yeah, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna be making a type of ceviche. It's called tiradito. The difference between a ceviche is that uh, traditionally doesn't have onions. Okay. Ceviche itself has to have onion, but this one is not so much, and you will see the Japanese influence into it. All right, so yeah, it's a little different flair. Yeah. We're going to start making the, the leche tigre cremoso, which is uh, okay. uh, one of the staples leche tigre in the restaurant. So the variation on it, let's kind of walk through a sure. traditional ceviche as well. Traditional ceviche is, I mean, it has one element that is very important. It's called okay. leche tigre. Right. And I like to call it uh, liquid ceviche. Uh, we're going to use that as a base and we're going to create another leche tigre, a more modern, okay. I, will, I will call it. Uh, which is an emulsification of scallops and a little bit of a canola oil. All right, so there are some variations in the way that you can prepare ceviche. So the traditional mm -hmm. model, uh, and then what we're going to look at today, which is kind of more of a hybrid. Um, walk us through some of the ingredients. Yes, the uh, you will see here some scallops that will go into the cremoso leche tigre, okay. which will give you this seafood uh, flavor. Right. Some garlic to enhance, again, the flavor. Lime juice, celery, some ají amarillo pepper, it's pretty much nice. the DNA of Peruvian cuisine. Right, so this is more of the, the spicy. The spicy. Elements. All right. And we're going to add another uh, spicy element into making the tiradito. Okay. And some oil, canola oil. All right, perfect. Okay, we're going to start using some ice as well, so you will give it that freshness and cold. Give it that chill. Chill. Nice. I like it. We're going to... A lot of ingredients here, too. A lot of ingredients. So you think about ceviche. It, I mean, it is a super simple dish, but at the same right. time, you can really create a lot of different fla flavor well, profiles, have, have, textures. Yes, you have your base, which is some, some Peruvian expert would say you only have to have five elements. Right. Lime juice, onions, lime, uh, fish, some celery, some chili pepper, you're good to go. Yeah, you're good. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun to see the difference, yeah. though, in this one. We're going to add some... What fish are juice? we using with this one? We're going to use cobia, okay. which is a firm flesh fish that will help us uh, do the slices, that, the thin slices that we are looking for. Good. Do you, when you're selecting fish, when you think about, for restaurant operators who might be introducing ceviche into right. their menus, 
what are some of the greatest fish species that you would use that would say, hey, this is a natural element for yes, really in my in my opinion, uh, the best fish for ceviche is anything that is fresh. Anything fresh. So fresh. All fish. The fresh is the I better. Like it. Okay. Uh, but if you uh, ask me for my perf per per uh, personal preference, I think halibut, halibut, okay. some right. flounders are the best. The best one for, for this kind of preparation. Ceviche here it was delicious. Yeah, it's a fish. The flesh is super yeah. nice. Delicious. So, so we're going to mix that up in the uh, Vitamix over in the there. Vitamix. If I know how to do it, uh, bring it out to the front. All right, right there. Keeps on Beautiful. Right. So we're going to start this. Right. So the color there is being we're brought out by the spice. Bit. We're going to use some of the leche tigre. Okay. And just throw it on. Yeah, a little bit of that. Okay. And we're going to add the canola oil. Okay. And that will give it the texture that we're looking for. Alright, so this is definitely giving it a lot more texture with the oil. Right. Beautiful. I like so that. we're gonna remove this baby okay. out of the blender. You will see the the texture. Beautiful colors too. Gorgeous. It comes creamy. Okay. Let me get it. Yeah. But that has a lot of it. By the way. Mm. Okay. Let me try it real quick. Perfect. Beautiful. So this is going to be our base for the tiradito that we're going to be making okay. right now. I'm going to grab some fish from the cooler down here. All right. And this is the... So uh, in using various, obviously, various fish types, um, let's talk about going, you know, because Peruvian... Uh, menu items, moving them off the coast. So can you use frozen fish for this if you were, say, in you know, Kansas I, City? I would prefer not do it, but I mean... Uh, say some, as fresh some, as possible. Some, yes, some Florida laws uh, kind of like make you use it because uh, it kills parasites. Right, if you keep right. it frozen for a, for a right. long time, it will keep par uh, kill parasites. But I mean, I, I mean, you have to, yes, it's but I, mean, I, 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 would rather, I would rather use fresh fish. So, and the good thing about this 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 kind of uh, preparation is, uh, uh, you will you will see the in, the Japanese influence in this dish. Okay. You slice the the fish right. sashimi style. Yep. And you will see the briefly marinated, and we're gonna cover it with the beautiful salsa. Okay. Have. So we're gonna cut it like, like it. sashimi, a ninety degree. And we're gonna start leaning down yep. in our dish. Okay. And go all nice. around. And again, I mean, making ceviche with cobia, regular ceviche when you get chunks of uh, mm -hmm. chunks of fish, it's gonna be kind of a tricky because it's a very dense right. fish. It's gonna be too too tough, I would say. I like it. So, in in moving into kind of the Peruvian flavors, um, for a lot of I think a lot of restaurants as they're trying to introduce some of the Peruvian concepts into what they're doing from a menu aspect. What are some of the popular items at uh, Pisco and Nazca that you guys are serving on the menu Definitely today? Definitely ceviche would be one of them. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we got seven of them. We okay, got seven so types of ceviche. A lot from, of varieties. A lot of variety. Yeah. We have a passion for ceviche, which is created pretty much for Florida. You, okay. have, you, you need these tropical flavors and passion fruits. Who doesn't love passion yep. fruits? Yep. I mean, it goes very nice with, with, with the concept, with the with Miami weather, with, with the people in, in Florida, mm -hmm. Latinos, most of them. And, uh, and, and we have, uh, again, some Nikkei flavors and, and, and Japanese flavors. Right. And some traditional as well. Great. We use this amount of fish. So you load that dish up. Is this a typical portion that you would serve at the restaurant? Yes. Okay. I mean, if, if we want to put a number on it, it would be like 3.5, 5 ounces. Okay. Yeah. We're going to just salt it a little bit. A little bit of salt in there. Salt. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Looks Good. amazing. We're gonna add some. Uh, let me go to the back and grab a spoon. Now you like it spicy. I do. We were talking about that prior to 
going live here. But some people will go with a non-spicy ceviche. What is the variations that you see here, like here, even here in South Florida? Right. I mean, I would say the ceviche has to have some level Gotta of spiciness. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but I, of course, we try to accommodate our people in the... Yeah, how spicy. Yeah, yeah. How hot do you want to go? Yeah. I like so it. this is what I will do. I'm going to add some rocotto chili pepper. Okay. Which is another Peruvian pepper. Yep. Spicier than the ají amarillo. Right. We're going to use some of the leche de tigre that we just made. Perfect. Cremoso. Okay. And I'm going to add some cilantro. Okay. We're going to mix it. And we're going to pour this beautiful sauce on top of the sage. It's very simple. Easy, too. Easy, very easy. Like the variation there. And as Peruvians, we like to have this with some crunchy So explain corners. the differences between the Teradito. Well, Teradito, as I said, uh, it, it's a ceviche, it's a type of ceviche, and uh, that doesn't have onions. All right, so it's just the lack of onions. It's just the lack of onions. Okay. And, and you can make it the way you want it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some people are now adding some onions into it. Okay. But so I will try A not. little so bit of texture in there. Textures, some uh, Peruvian cancha, which is a uh, corn nut. Yep. And some sweet potato cubes. Okay which is going to give it the balance, uh, the sweetness that, that you need. Yep. You're building this. So this dish is really p starting to pop a lot. So it looks great. Mm. In so the seven you... types of ceviches that you're serving at Pisco Nazca, what one do you find that is trending as the top ceviche on the menu? We have the, the cremoso, actually, the one that we make. The, that is, okay. the one we're making is, All right. it, it is one of the, one of the better ones. Sellers. And we have a mixto as well that has uh, a, a bunch of uh, seafood. And that's, that's one of the spices one we have. Yeah, absolutely. So a little cilantro. Yeah, cilantro on top. And nice. I would say that would do it. Perfect. Simple, All right. beautiful. Yeah, so you've really got, as you guys can see here, you know, a plate that is really presentable. So you've got, now that's almost Instagram worthy or is Instagram worthy. <laughs> um, so you get kind of that flex of colors and flavors. Mm, right. All those cool things. We got to taste this. Yes, so please. Let's get a fork back here. Mm -hmm. And, and again, it's a perfect, it's a, I would call it it's a perfect dish because it, it has everything. It has freshness, it has crunchiness, it has sweet, it got uh, acidity. Right. And uh, that what makes this dish, I mean, Okay. Super nice. Mm. I'm with you. I will go hotter. You will go hotter. Yeah. Nice. But that's good. Okay. Perfect. That's really great. So going this. Mm. It's coming back. So you do get a lot of um, flavor variances there. Yeah. So things kind of come in late. Mm -hmm. um, the sweetness starts to come in which is really good. And the texture of the fish really works well with this. Right. So I like that. And the crunch, the sweet potatoes I right there on top. I personally will do, Perfect. for instance, uh, tiradito with halibut. Because the, 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 the flesh is very soft and nice. It's more elegant. Right. And that has to go with ceviche. I like that. Cobia, yellowtail, probably the best fish mm. for this kind of presentation. So you had one pepper here that we yes. were talking about. This guy right here. This guy right here. So what is this? A hilimo. A hilimo. It, it's uh, related to habaneros. Okay. Uh, in the scale of uh, spicing, it should be right there by the end. Okay. I, <laughs> in the scope about ghost pepper. I wouldn't use ghost pepper on my ceviche, but this one is very aromatic. But and, would and you, nice. if you were using this, would you prep it in the sauce or in the in the mix itself or yes. make it a topping? I, I will use it in the mixing of the leche de It will give it the aroma and the spiciness. That we okay, need. great. All right, well, this has been great. Uh, Chef Miguel, thanks so much for Thank stopping in today. This has been fun. National Ceviche Day, of course. If you're thinking about putting menu items that are Peruvian flavor, ceviche, of course, is going to be the staple item that you definitely want to have on your menus. So if you like this uh, recipe, make sure and check it in the blog. We'll be having this uh, episode posted out on foodabletv.com. Of course, you're going to check us out. Hopefully, you're watching this on either Facebook or YouTube or one of our live stream channels. 
Uh, make sure and check us out for more great episodes right here from Foodable Smart Kitchen and Bar. Chef, thanks so much well, for stopping in. Happy to be here. We're going to eat the rest of this. Please. <laughs> All right. Thank you.